Today in Oslo, Magnus Carlsen played a special exhibition match. He took on the Norwegian nation. He was playing in a shopping center in the center of Oslo, uh, quite open to uh, spectators. And this was uh, filmed online for the Norwegian newspaper VG. And well, there was massive interest. It worked like this. Carlsen had one minute to make each of his moves. Then there were three experts, three Norwegian grandmasters, Simon Abdestein, Jon Ludwig Hammer, and Leif Erland Johansson, who would make recommendations. And then Norway would vote online. Basically, anyone could vote online, actually, but the match was only publicized in Norway. So in practice, it was Norway against Magnus. And this is how the game went. There was also a special rule as well, which I'll come on to later in the game. So the Norwegian team had white and they opened in traditional fashion with e4 and Carlsen played for a fight. He played the Sicilian, no, none of this Berlin stuff today. And it's an open Sicilian. And Carlsen played the four knights variation. No. I can't remember him playing this before, but okay, it's a very respectable variation of the Sicilian, of course. And now f3, which I believe was the suggestion of Simon Agdestein, former coach of Carlson, of course. And he said that he wanted to play a kind of English attack with bishop b3 and queen d2, castles queenside, and then a pawn storm on the king side. Well, this is a very respectable system, of course. But Magnus cut across that by playing e5. So we have a typical backward queen's pawn position that can arise from, well, several variations, Sicilian, sometimes the Nidorf, but you'll see, of course, there's no pawn on a6 here. But anyway, a typical pawn structure. Now bishop e7, okay, good development. And the Norwegian team decides to go for knight d5 straight away, which sort of forces a change in the pawn structure. So black loses a bit of time. Now you can see that black has this kingside pawn majority, whereas white has a pawn majority on the queen side. And, you know, white at some moment will try to force through c5. So there's imbalance in the position. But generally, it's known that this pawn structure is pretty favorable for black because well, as we'll see with this move, black often gets very nice counter chances on the king side. So white advancing the, king, the queen side pawn majority. And now this is a, a very typical move that Carlson played. Basically, he is well looking to drive away the knight, but it's not just that. This pawn on a5 controls b4, and that makes it more likely that black will be able to sit the knight in on c5 to control these important squares on the queen side, so basically preventing white's queen side majority rolling forward. Knight d2 from the Norwegian team, I think it's a good move because at some moment you want to try and press forward on the queen side, and maybe this knight can be redirected to a, a better square on c3. Now, Carlsen played in a very typically positional way with bishop g5, exchanging off dark squared bishops or trying to exchange them off and that'll give him more control over these squares. It's a very sound move and a very typical move for this position. If you want to play more brutally then you could play like this. Now this gives away the e4 square but it does allow black the time to bring the rook up to attack on the king side and this is a very crude way of playing but actually not as not as bad as it looks at first glance. You know, black can try and swing the queen over, and then the knight could maybe come over here, or possibly via f8 to open up the line of the bishop. You can see I've put a lot of uh, a lot of red arrows on the board there, um, but that just gives you an idea that well, okay, a lot of pieces can come over to the king side, but okay, it's a, it's slightly all or nothing. Bishop g5 is definitely the sound move, and now I was anticipating just bishop f2 just keeping control over these dark squares. Um, 
came as a bit of a surprise to me when the Norwegian team voted for the exchange of bishops. I think positionally, you can see now that this is really quite favourable for black. It's a beautiful square for the knight. I think this is the problem with these matches where um, you get, well, voting, you, you get a decision by committee, basically. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, it's just a bit of fun, these exhibition matches, but very interesting all the same. So the bishop dropped back. So at this point, you know, I, I thought that Magnus was doing pretty well. Uh, of course, White is trying to play a3 and b4 and get his queenside pawn majority going. Um, I was anticipating perhaps something like rook a e8 seems very logical to me. And you never know, this rook might swing up the board. Um, you know, sometimes you can even force through e4. Black is ha, has a very pleasant position. But Magnus played really aggressively here. I think from a positional point of view, this makes a lot of sense. Just attacking on the queen side before white has a chance to advance. So obviously, if this is taken, then this is a, a really favourable exchange for black because this is such a poor bishop. And so there's an isolated, isolated um, d-pawn now. But here's where it started getting tricky. The Norwegian team played f4, very good move. Now, after this exchange, you can see that the diagonal has been blocked, and that means that white can now take on b5. So we've got a really unbalanced position. White has four pawns against two on the queen side. Black has four against two on the king side. So now what Carlson would like to do is attack, and this is doing very nicely here. Now the queen repositions, very good move. So the queen wants to come in here and uh, I think it would be not not a good idea for white to play rook e1. That would be taken off by the queen very quickly. Knight f3. Queen check. Carlsen playing really well here and at this moment, I mean if, if this were Carlsen playing against a, well, a normal human, I would think that I would expect Carlsen to do do very well from this. I, I would expect a, a Carlsen win. But at this point, now here's where the special regulations come into play. Because, as I said, there were three experts advising the Norwegian people voting online. And at this moment, they rang the bell and asked for assistance from Houdini, the chess program Houdini. Well, this made a massive difference in the game. Um, each of those three experts had the right to ask for Houdini's assistance three times in the game. And well here, you know, I would expect, for example, bishop takes knight. This is a very human move. Get rid of that strong piece on e4. And well, I think black is doing well here, but it's still not completely clear because you know, white is t potentially taking pawns here, but I mean, I still I favour black here. The king is safe, and maybe the bishop can come to e2, and you know, this pawn majority might come into play. I think black is doing well in practical terms, but that's what I would expect a, a human to play. Instead, the Norwegian people followed the suggestion of Houdini, bishop d3. Now, this looks bizarre to give up the exchange. This is what happened. But suddenly you can see that White's Queen gets a lot of counterplay and these pieces are actually holding up the king side very well. Um, if, for example, let's say Queen e3, bringing the Queen back into play and covering these two pieces, then white takes here, and suddenly it's rather unclear. Of course, black can go for it with something like g5, but this is, you know, black exposes his king, and these pawns on the queen side provide counterplay for white. I'm not surprised that Carlsen declined to go in for this, and instead he decided to play safe. He played rook here, and after queen takes, you can see he's threatening something nasty down here, well, the Norwegian team covered the back rank 
And here, again, Carlsen could risk all with g5, but I think this is, well, I think it's a very dubious decision. You know, white's king is relatively safe, and suddenly it's black's king after the queen moves and the deep pawn advances that could be in trouble. So Carlsen, as he said afterwards, he said he decided to put the brakes on. He realised that this bishop d3 was a Houdini suggestion, and he respected it and decided to just make a draw by perpetual check. There's no way out for white, no sensible way out. And you can see they're going to agree a draw in this position, you know, after, after this. There's, there's just a, a move repetition. So an interesting contest, actually, but it just shows what can happen just in one move if you get the assistance of a computer. In these very complicated situations with a lot of variations, computers are very powerful indeed. But interesting that earlier, Carlson had won the positional battle. So, good stuff, but it was all a bit of fun. And, you know, after the game, uh, Magnus, you know, didn't seem upset with the result. He was, he was pretty happy. Now, this channel, this YouTube channel, Power Play Chess, has been going for a couple of years now. And there are literally hundreds of clips available for you to watch online for free. Um, these clips are analysed by me and presented by me and they're posted on YouTube with the assistance of a colleague of mine who takes care of all the technical stuff, that's not my department, and well we do this for free. Um, if you'd like to contribute to the running costs of the Powerplay Chess channel then you're most welcome to, and you're able to do that by donating to us via PayPal. And if you go to the About tab on the channel, you can see that you can pay via PayPal in either US dollars, euros, or British pounds. So if you'd uh, perhaps like to contribute, that would be great. And we'd certainly look upon suggestions for games that you'd like to analyse more favourably if you'd like to make a contribution. Thanks very much for watching.